Hi everyone, it's Exo Man, and I have a brief presentation for you today, and I hope you'll stay tuned and watch it. It's called The Stolen Pie, and it's something that just came to me today based on some memories and some things that I learned as a, in the very early years of my life, and I really feel like this can be a, a life-changing talk for at least a few of you. I hope it is. I hope you'll stay tuned. Let me just put a shirt on and we'll go out for a walk. Okay, so... <clears throat> isn't it interesting when you have occurrences or experiences in your life that... Uh, you don't really think a whole lot about it at the time, but then through the years it soaks in and, and it, it, it turns out that it was it, very much a teaching moment or a learning moment and something that shaped and changed you for the rest of your life. It's, it's, uh, this is such an experience that I want to talk about and it's, it's, it's simple yet very poignant to me and who I became. I, I talk all the time about my background, and, and this uh, instance occurred when I was, I think, 16. And it was kind of as I was coming out of the darkest ages, the dark age of my life, uh, which was probably from about s eight, seven or eight, to about uh, 15, 16 or so. 17 and uh, I was 16 and I was working in a Waffle House in Denver off of uh, the interstate right off of the interstate 70 on uh, I think it was 70 on Colfax as it went out to what was then dry land prairie and and, uh, and such and while I was working in that Waffle House um, I was a cook. I was a short order cook and I would I worked my ass off. I really did. I worked to help support my family. Um, my mother often didn't have work and so it was incumbent on my older brother and myself to to pay the rent and bills and buy food. And I would work sometimes all I would come in in the morning, work all day and then the night cook evening cook wouldn't show up and I'd have to pull a double or I'd work all, all evening and then the late cook wouldn't come in and I'd have to work all night too. It was a, it could, it was a pretty tough job for a young guy but uh, I flourished there you know I liked to cook and uh, I felt I felt like I was doing something but in that setting I uh, I learned that I would you know have my shift and I would I think I would get a meal, you know, a meal was provided, you know, at break time and I would make my meal and go in the back and eat where the, where the guests couldn't see me eating. But uh, I wasn't allowed to just take anything that I wanted. Uh, naturally, I was an employee and, and a certain amount of dollars per hour were provided. It was very low then and, and a meal per shift. But I would often want a pie, a piece of pie. And of course, I, lurk, I worked the late shift a lot, the graveyard shift, you know, uh, I think from midnight till seven in the morning or something like that. And I would occasionally just help myself to a piece of pie. I liked chocolate cream pie. And uh, that's what I would eat. I would just pilfer a piece of chocolate pie and take it in the back and scarf it down. And then, on occasion, I would come in as, I, I frequently came in as a customer. Because I had, you know, I, I knew the staff and I knew a lot of the regulars. And I was a kid and I didn't have, I wasn't going to school, I wasn't engaged in any sports or anything like that. I was more or less a street kid. So I would just go hang out to be around people and around people I knew and uh, I would I would buy a piece of pie when I sat at the counter sometimes I, always I would have a I would have coffee and refills 
and I would buy pie. Now here is what was so interesting to me. I noticed distinct difference in the experience of eating the pie that I sat at the counter and paid for versus the pie that I took and didn't pay for. One was a pie that was afforded to me by my by my resourcefulness, by getting work and earning money and earning enough money to buy a piece of pie and a cup of coffee. I earned that. I earned that right. I earned it wasn't a right. I earned that sustenance. So it it wasn't given to me and it wasn't stolen by me. All right. Now the pie I kid you not. Now think about this. The pie that I ate in the back was a different experience. The pie that I took. It wasn't something that was mine. It wasn't rightfully mine. It was an ill-gotten gain. Okay? On the smallest part of the scale, the spectrum of life and, and things given and things earned. It was an ill-gotten gain. It was an ill-gotten gain just as you know, an elderly woman's life savings was Bernie Madoff's ill-gotten gain. Okay, and that's something I want to get into a little bit more, a little bit later here. You know, but I'll try. I won't. I won't. I'll try not to go on too long. But um, the experience, it was. It was profound. It was subtle. It was subtle, but in the long term, it was. It was. It would be profound. I learned that in my life. From this and other instances, what we earn and what we're cr we create for ourselves is so much more meaningful than things that we take, we take for granted, or we steal, or, or you know, or we borrow, or you know, whatever we whatever we want to say when 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 a writer steals another writer's thoughts or ideas, you know, it's it's not the same as is what is original and what we create okay so I think you get you I think you get the gist of what I'm saying but now think about your life I think about my life later and through the years and I've often thought about that and I've often I've often let experiences like that guide and shape me and so I don't know it was it was maybe for, for years after that I thought about it and it did shape me it, did, it helped me become the person I became and I I put aside things like that well, okay when I was a boy going back further I stole I stole so many things I mean I literally physically walked into stores and stole things uh, I, I justified it because I didn't have money I didn't you know I would get little odd jobs and try to earn money and buy things but I justified and rationalized stealing food uh, because I was hungry and uh, it was my own little brand of situational ethics early on I thought by God I'm hungry so I have a right to steal from this big store I don't have any face to face with the owner it's just some rich people that it's not gonna hurt my stealing of course it was bad of course it was wrong and I knew right from wrong, but I did it anyway, and it cursed me. I felt, I felt, how did it curse me? Karma, my friends. I felt bad because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a thinking human being, and I knew it was wrong, and I did it anyway, and I felt bad through my life for having done that, and I lost a sense of innocence and a sense of trust. I would later become a businessman and I knew people were stealing from me. You see how that works? I knew. I knew because I myself did it. So I not that not only did I know, but I thought about it. I thought how they would do it. I thought how they would commit these petty crimes and stealing product off my shelf and, and fudging time on timesheets and things like that. I tainted myself. By stealing now yes you may think I've come a long way and I you know I've bettered myself and I'm not that person anymore and that's true I'm not and I've I've paid I've paid my debt in a sense um, 
but it stays with you. These things stay with you for the whole of your life. And I've forgiven myself for my petty crimes as a child, yes. But uh, I'm, I'm happy. I'm in, a, I'm in a happy and good place now because I've, I've learned so much and I've, I've grown so much. But the, the, the lesson here is do, do the right thing and it will reward you. Um, it, there are shortcuts. The shortcuts will curse you, okay? Those kind of shortcuts will curse you. They will ruin your life. They will strip every vestige of quality from the days of your life. When you take things that don't belong to you, you think all manner of rationale and all kinds of things to, to justify your actions, but you're really just screwing yourself. You're really just destroying the quality of your life. Yes, you're harming other people. And yes, you can stand there and say, well, that person deserved to be taken like that because they were foolish and I'm smart. You're not that smart. You're, you, you know, when you're stealing, when you're taking advantage of people, you're just stealing and taking advantage of people. You're clever in ways that other people who, who, who are smart don't want to be. There are a lot of smart people out there who don't, who, uh, who are law abiding. And so they have quality. They have pride. They have integrity. These are the things that they haven't lost. They have innocence. And those are great commodities in these times. And, and the, so that's it. The stolen pie. Would you, would you rather steal a pie or would you rather earn it? Think about it. What is gained and what is lost? You see what I'm saying? So that's, that's my little talk. I hope, I hope it makes sense to some of you. And I hope some of you out there who are, who are on the fence and rationalizing will have a change of heart. Because sometimes we need to hear these things. Sometimes we don't just, we don't just know. We need, we, need to be, we need to be guided. And I'm here to tell you that your life will be more meaningful, more enjoyable, more quality if you, if you change. If you're, doing, if you're living that way and you change now, it means everything. So I guess in the end, I'm asking you a question. I'm your server. What pie would you like today? Would you like the bitter pie? Or would you like the sweet pie? The pie that you earn is the sweetest pie. Choose that one. And for those of you who have lived a just life, living, you're living with decency and decorum and values and, and you're law abiding, but even still you're, you've been taken advantage of, you've been ripped off, um, don't, don't sweat it. In the end, you, you get what's yours. You're, you are rewarded by your, by your gains, by your resourcefulness that you earned. And you are rewarded by having your integrity, by having your reputation, by having all of the most precious things and values in life intact. So don't worry about people ripping you off. Yes, it's painful, but they're learning experiences. Stay away from these mongrels as much as you can. Um, pr protect, protect your investments and your savings and things like that. And, and have security in your house and just do what you can do. Uh, but know that those people who have ripped you off and hurt you and, and taken what is rightfully yours, they don't win in the end. They never, never do. You may see them sail off in a yacht, but they're sailing to hell, you know? They're sailing to their own hell on earth that they've created, that it can be no other way. Whether you believe in karma or not, there it is. It unfolds as it should, okay? And in the end, death is the great equalizer for all of us anyway. So enjoy your life, see, see the humor in it, stay humble, and stay true to yourself. And thank you all, thank you so much for watching. It's been a joy to share this with you and I hope it helps some of you in some small way. Thank you.